Hi, I'm Big Lou, and this is Big Lou Barbecue. Another things I want to do. And the other day, I cooked a brisket. Yeah, and lately, I've been uh, fooling around with cooking with chicory. Uh, chicory and replacing coffee rubs, because coffee rubs seem to be very popular now, you know? And uh, I like coffee rubs, too. That goes well with beef. And I think chicory goes well with coffee. So I've been modifying a few, and basically I've taken Stephen Reichland's Java Rub recipe and put chicory in it, and I've been making rubs with that. I tried it on a chuck roast. I called it a chicory chuck, but I didn't make a video about that. That was just sort of the test subject. And then uh, last week I cooked a London broil with it, and the same kind of rub I put on a brisket. And this is the first time I cooked the whole Packer brisket on my Barrel House 18C without splitting it. I have cooked uh, briskets on there before. I split them. I did one. The first one I did was on camera, and I've done about three more since then. But this was a smaller brisket only about 13.27 pounds and um I said, you know what? I bet it'll fit on that grate. I bet it'll fit there. I measured it when I got home, 18 inches, 18 inch diameter barrel, and it once I shri trimmed it, it fit right in there. And uh with the extension ring, it's just as high above the coals as it is as a brisket is in my UDS, which I normally cook a whole pack of brisket in, is my full 55 gallon UDS that I built. But this barrel house uses less charcoal. Thought we'd get it done. So here's what happened as I cooked a brisket with chicory. I'm calling it a chisket. All right, I haven't put a whole packer brisket on the grate of my barrel house yet. Uh, I would rather hang them, but I thought this one would fit. It was about 18 inches long. I cut most of that fat off of it. That's what it looked like when I cut the fat off of it. I'm no expert brisket trimmer, as you can tell. I kind of boogered it up a little bit. But I enjoy the process now that I've learned how to save all that fat and cook tallow with it. Made about a, a little over a pint of tallow with it. And I saved those red meat pieces that I showed you in that bowl right there. And I'm going to make a broth with it and I'm going to make take that beef broth and mix it with some of that coffee and chicory that I made earlier in the morning and that's going to be my mop sauce but right now I'm going to take that coffee and chicory and mix it with these two ounces of Worcestershire sauce so it's black uh, chicory coffee and two ounces of Worcestershire sauce and that is what I'm using as a binder for it and then I'm using uh, this rub that I made up where I basically took Stephen Reichland's Java rub recipe replaced the Java or the coffee with chicory a few other substitutions too I put turbinado sugar in it instead of brown sugar and I put uh, carob powder in it instead of cocoa powder since the chicory is a little more bitter than coffee and carob powder is a little more sweeter than cocoa that's why I did that all right so I rub it all down with this Worcestershire sauce and coffee I didn't marinate the brisket or bind or put this on overnight or anything like that I just did it before I went out and lit up the coals and there we go putting the rub on I put the rub into a coffee cup so I didn't get my jar dirty but I didn't have quite enough I needed to add a little bit more so I added a little bit more and this is what it looked like when it was all rubbed down you know I just kind of pat it in there don't really rub it but anyway it's time to go out and get the grill thrill on so we're going to light up the barrel house kings from charcoal was on sale so I bought a lot of it and that's what I'm using uh basically the recommended way I fill up the basket take two-thirds out I mean one-third out and light it and then I put a piece of mesquite wood chunk in the middle and some hickory chips around the outside I had no reason to use hickory but I did have a rhyme it rhymes with chicory I spread the coals all over the top that way the drippings uh don't dampen any unlit coals uh when the brisket drips on it so that's how i like to do it put the barrel on it and we'll go back to live uh, for a minute and show you how this happened all right this is saying about 225 but that's the dome lid it's uh, hotter down in there and that's what uh barrel house says too um that's saying about 266 according to my thermal work smoke now look i gotta tell you with this extension ring i am not afraid of putting this brisket on the grate because that's about the distance between um, my grate and the coals in my big 55-gallon drum UDS where I cook whole briskets in. So let's find out if this one will fit. Grab it right here. Just take it and almost 13 pounds, almost bends my little uh, flipping stick here. Uh, let's see. Can we get this to fit? Please fit. I don't want to have to change you to hooks. Yeah, it's going to fit. Touch the side a little bit there, but that's all right. That'll cook off. Hey! You tuck in there like that. Guys, it fit. It fit. But that's why I don't use much bigger briskets. A 15-pound brisket, I would hang. I wouldn't uh, try to grate. This is a 13, what did we say, 13.27 before we trimmed it. So let me get the uh, probe in there. 
And I think I'm gonna put it right into the flat. Just like that. All right. A couple hours, we're gonna baste it. This will take up too much of the video, but let me show you. I'm making tallow with the fat pieces from that brisket. I always do nowadays. I used to not, but now I do. And um, made broth with the red meat pieces and uh, put some onion and some celery and stuff like that in there. I'm gonna dip that up and uh, mix it 50-50 with that coffee and chicory from this morning. Got a little bit of that left, and we're gonna go out and baste this brisket. It's been on about two hours. This is cooked for about two and a half. All right, been on for about two hours, and this is now down to 200, and my thing over there on the Thermorwork smoke is saying 213. It's been around 232 for most of this two hours. So opening it up is gonna let some oxygen get down to the coals, and I think they'll come back up. That's what it looks like right there. I don't know if you can see it too well. Uh, but you know, mopping it's gonna be a whole lot easier with it resting on this grate than when hanging it. So I'm glad this one fit. All right. Got that beef broth and coffee and chicory. And I guess I could put it in a spray bottle, but I'm just gonna use this mop. It works really well. Uh, also, when I put it on, I put it fat cap up. I noticed about an hour, I remembered about an hour after I said, wait, I need to have it fat cap down. So I went and switched it. So it switched from the last time you saw it. Just get this all over it. I'll just pour some of it on there. How about that? But I don't want to put my fire out, so I better just mop it. You got an offset smoker, you're not doing this right over the uh, right over the coals like you do in a drum smoker. I'll probably mop it again. The internal temperature is 141. So the rest of this is gonna get poured into the uh, aluminum foil pouch that I make for it when we wrap it here. I'll probably be wrapping it in another hour or two. It's been on for about two right now, so. All right, Sam, Dave, and the fabulous Thunderbirds told me to wrap it up. I'll take it, all right. 241 was the cooker temp at this point, and it was approaching 160, the brisket temp there in the flat. So it's time to get it wrapped. I'm going to wrap it in aluminum foil, and I'm going to pour that uh, coffee and uh, broth mixture into it. That's what it looked like. It looked like it had a little redder tint to it down in the drum, but when I pull it out, it looks a little blacker. And the bark was looking crisp at this point. However, my mixture tended to make it a little mushy. More on that at the end of the video toward the taste test time. All right, so anyway, we go to go ahead and pull it out, but you can see it's beautiful right there. But you can see it's darker when it's out of the drum. It looked a little darker. All right, so I'll pour this coffee and broth mixture in there. And uh, I tell you what, it was a really, I was really surprised. I was wondering what it was going to be like. But I'm going to tell you, it was a very familiar flavor. I'll tell you what that flavor was at the end of the video. But I bet you country folks, you country boys and gals, can guess what that flavor was with that coffee and all those brisket drippings. All right, so we set it back in there. And I was planning to let it go another full four hours. But six hours and 45 minutes into the cook time, this is what I was getting on it. I did have to replace the charcoal. And um, when I did that, it went up to about 250 was the internal temp. But the uh, brisket was going at 205 according to my Thermoworks smoke. So I'm going to take my Thermo Pop and double check it here. All right. In certain places. Turn it on. And right there in the flat, it, it's 203. Check the point. That's a little off camera, but it was 208 or 209 there. And then it's 210 right there in that part of the flat. So it's time to put it in a towel, put it in a cooler, and I'll let it rest for about 45 minutes. All right, got it out of the cooler, unwrapped it out of aluminum foil, put it here on the cutting board. It's really moist. The bark is really moist. And uh, my wife kind of likes a crispier bark than that, but I um, want to find out what it tastes like. Now this, I cooked it fat cap down. I'm generally cooked them fat cap up in my UDS. So this is the uh, flat side. Let's go ahead and see if we can turn it over and take a look at the um, point and the fat cap side. And that's falling off. So probably stuck inside the aluminum foil. That's all right. Go ahead and uh, start cutting on this and see what we got. I believe the grain was running like that. So we're going to... Cut that corner. Oh, look at that smoke ring. The barrel house just does great smoke rings. I mean, it's not extremely wide, but it, it is uh, deep. So there we go. Let's see what we can do here. Mm. 
Mm. I love the way that chicory and coffee does with beef. Mm. Might not be for everybody, but I've really enjoyed it. The chuck roast I did had a, you know, a dryer bark, but I didn't wrap it in aluminum foil. So, and that wasn't on camera either. Cut a few more of these. Smoke ring's not a stick right here because of the fat cap, but it is on the bottom. All right, take a look at the point. We'll just cut right through it. There we go. All right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, it's juicy. All right, I'm gonna cut one uh, long pencil thin. No, that's not really pencil thin, is it? Pencil thin strip from the flat. See what we got here. Mm, not too bad, not too bad. Still hot, not too bad. All right, honey, you wanna try some? I want the end. You want the end, she, all right, it's got that, that mm -hmm. sh, uh, strong chicory rub on it. That's what i you want this piece or you want this piece here? I'll take this one. Cut up some from the full point. The bark is not as crispy from having been wrapped. But the flavor is excellent. Mm -hmm. It's moist though. It's very moist, very tender. Mm. It's easy on the braces. Cut a, I do like a crispy. Easy on your bark. braces, you said. Right there's the point. There's the point. Don't know if I cut that on camera or not, but mm. that's really tender. Here it is all plated up, and what I did is I did some of the drippings that came out of the uh, aluminum foil packet. I gotta tell you, it tastes a lot like red eye gravy, and uh, it, I just put it on here, put the espresso barbecue sauce on the potato with some point meat, and that's how I'm serving this, y'all. It's time to eat. I'm hungry. Hey, thanks for sticking around for final thoughts. Uh, look, I want to tell you, it really did taste like red eye gravy, and the next morning I took two strips of that. Um, brisket flat, seared them off in a cast iron pan on both sides, made some buttermilk biscuits in the oven, made two eggs sunny side up, and I put that uh, drip into it, which is kind of like red eye gravy, all over the biscuit and the uh, brisket flat that I seared off in the cast iron pan. Ate that for breakfast. That's how good that those drippings were. I was really surprised about that. That made up for the mushy crust. All right, just one more thing, as Columbo used to say, just one more thing, sir. Y'all remember Columbo? The day I cooked this brisket, there was a lot of videos coming up on YouTube. Um, about cooking with coffee. A lot of the channels I like to watch. And I also said, hashtag, we cook with coffee, we cook with coffee. I'm thinking, I'm cooking a brisket with coffee today, you know? Last week, I cooked a London broil with uh, coffee, you know? But I didn't know about the hashtag, and there's a reason, I, or the collaboration, I didn't know about the collaboration. And the reason is, is because I'm not part of the Cool Kids Club. I've always been a misfit. Actually, the real reason is, I live my life with pre-World War II technology. Serious, y'all. My personal friends, they're shocked that I even have a YouTube channel. They're like, you, of all people, have a YouTube channel? I'm like, yeah, I started this, and I can't believe I'm doing it either. Having fun, though. Anyway, since I'm not real big on social media, I don't have a big presence. I got a Facebook page, but I don't hardly ever look at it. Um, they had this collaboration where people are cooking with coffee. So I'm not including the hashtag down below because I want to be part of the Cool Kids Club. Never have been, probably never will. But I am including it because if you click on that link, you'll see a lot of great channels cooking a lot of great things with coffee. And a lot of it's beef, tri-tips and chuck roast and other things, all right? So go down and uh, click that link and you'll see other people cooking with coffee. And I want to thank the channel Just88. Eight, eight. That's just the number eight and the past tense of the word to eat, eight, A-T-E. Uh, their channel started it and they said, hey, Big Lou, go ahead and uh, include that hashtag when you get this video up. All right. Hey, thanks for watching Big Lou Barbecue. You know what I like to say? Gracias por mirar.